hello welcome back to another video um if the lighting in this video alters throughout apologies straight away i'm using a mix of like artificial lighting above me and natural lighting because i mentioned this in my last video but i know that some people are here just for like the informative content so you might not have watched it i've moved in with dan now so dan is banished to the bedroom because he lives in an apartment obviously i live with him now so we live in this apartment what I will say is it's definitely a lot harder to film in an apartment than it is in a house. Like when I lived with my mum and dad, I was like, I can just go sit in the extension and film. I can go sit in my room. But when everything's on one floor and we've been watching the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial, I was like, look, you need to either take a nap this afternoon or just go and sit in the bedroom. Hopefully going to be a really, really helpful video. It's going to be all about how to put together a workout program. And I'm kind of going to use my own workout program, which I'll be following for the next probably six to eight weeks, if not longer. I'm going to see how I go with it. I'm going to see how much I enjoy it. You know, any moves that like stick with me, any that don't. And then after about eight weeks, I'll probably reassess, make some minor adjustments. But yeah, that's the program that I'm going to be following. And I'm kind of going to use that to illustrate the points that I'm going to talk about in this video. And of course, if you don't already know this, whenever I share a workout program with you, if it's my own personal workout program, I'm sharing that shit for free. Like I do not need to be charging people £50 to pay for something that literally did not take me long to make up whatsoever um like i said with the fact that it is free it is literally just my workout program you are welcome to join me you're welcome to follow the same program as me should you wish to obviously disclaimer if you are embarking on any fitness routine always consult your doctor your gp before you jump into anything injuries all that sort of stuff i can't guide you through that it's not a one-to-one -one thing if you're going to follow the program you're going to follow it at your own risk the only thing i will say is it's not beginner friendly if you guys want me to do another video on me putting together a workout program for beginners how to do that which i'll kind of touch on in this video but because i'm using my own program to illustrate certain points it might not be as helpful for like a straight up beginner so if people would want that video then let me know because there are some different like considerations if you are just starting out um, but yeah if you are a beginner i really wouldn't recommend jumping into this program um for a few reasons which i'll probably touch on as i go through but yeah how to put together a workout program obviously being an online coach i make workout programs every single week for new clients for clients that are renewing cycles with me i am always doing programming and with this video just before i get into like the nitty gritty i don't if i did this video like in depth on every single point this video is going to be hours and hours long and i know that some people love a long video but i don't want to banish dan for too long so if there's anything i go over in this video for example things like reps in reserve things like um training volume which i have already done a video on glute training volume but if you want one like just more generally broadly speaking in depth about volume let me know I'm more than happy to do it but i'm kind of just going to briefly touch on things enough so that you should hopefully understand how my thought process works when i'm putting together my own personal workout programs some tips things that you're going to need to consider because i know not everyone has the money for coaching like i'm an online coach but like the squeeze is real right now energy bills sky high petrol sky high everything sky high so we need to be cutting costs somewhere and it can be quite daunting if you've had a pt or a coach and now maybe you can't afford to keep up with that like luxury that privilege um so hopefully this video will be useful there are a couple of things that when you are looking at making a program are no-brainers that you are going to want to think about the first of which being goals now i would split this into aesthetic goals and performance goals so what are your goals what are you aiming to get out of this training program for example if you are aiming to grow your glutes which i know people are sick of people wanting to grow their glutes but like the reason my content surrounds it is because it's what i get asked about and i'm not going to make content that people don't want and a lot of people just want glute related content so that's always where my brain goes so yeah if your goal is to grow your glutes 
that is going to heavily influence your training program because you're probably going to, you know, when you're looking at exercise selection, it will impact that. When you're looking at the orders of exercises, it will impact that. When you're looking at your training frequency, which muscle groups you're going to bias over others, it's going to impact that. And also goals wise, you want to be setting some performance goals. I personally believe everyone should be setting themselves performance goals right from beginner to like super, super advanced. Always be training for some performance goals because motivation wise and motivation is an absolute fucking myth. Like it's bullshit. Like I, I could not tell you the last time I was genuinely motivated to train, but I have been to the gym four times this week and there was not an ounce of motivation in me to go. It's just a habit. It's a routine. However, you do need a little bit of a drive and a bit of an anchor and there's nothing wrong with having aesthetic goals but they are a bit more of an extrinsic anger anger anchor um a bit more of an extrinsic motivation and those kind of motivators typically don't tend to last as long it won't stick with you also if your goal is to lose five pounds or you know gain an inch on your biceps gain an inch on your quads once you've got that you then kind of just feel a little bit lost um, and you might not know where to go next. Whereas with performance goals, you can always just say, well, I want to add more weight, you know, that can be a whole thing. Your performance goals are a bit more intrinsic. It's more intrinsically motivated. It's more about you sort of thing, if that makes sense. So those goals, those motivations tend to stick a lot better than aesthetic ones. I've seen it with myself. I've seen it with clients like, trust me the performance stuff sticks way 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 better so i would recommend you sit down and you think what are your goals because performance wise if your goal is to hit a 100 kg squat and you're not putting any squats in your program the math isn't mathing there needs to be an air an an element of specificity i can't i can never say that word there needs to be an element of specific specificity i can't say that one. There needs to be an element of that in your training, especially with lifting, because things like squats and deadlifts in particular, they're a very technical lift. And yes, you can do other movements to kind of help strengthen you in certain portions of a squat or to help transfer over to those lifts, but there's going to be nothing better for your strength on those lifts than doing those lifts every single week. So you need to think about your performance goals because they are going to impact your training program. If you want to hit a PB on a lift, it needs to be in the training program. Um, then another thing that you are going to want to consider is your fitness level. So like I said, are you a beginner? Are you advanced? Are you super, super advanced? Something that you need to consider with your fitness levels because that is then going to inform things like your frequency. For example, if this is your first ever workout program, you've never stepped foot in the gym before, you, you're not realistically, you shouldn't really be going in and aiming to be doing five times a week straight away if you've never trained before in your life. You're going to be way too sore, your body's not going to be used to it and you're going to really, really struggle. It's better to start off less, so maybe you'd go in with like three full body sessions and then work your way up to like body part splits, higher frequency in training. Um, so it's going to impact things like your frequency. It's also going to impact your volume because the... <sighs> Volume's a bit of a sticky one because as a beginner, for example, you don't want to put loads and loads and loads of volume in for the reason that I've just stated. However, you can't really put a beginner on a super low volume training program that you would have an advanced lifter on because you, when you're a beginner, when you're a few months into training, you don't really know. You can't really gauge a failure typically properly. You don't really know how many reps in reserve you have. You're probably way off with your estimations of that. So the chances are if you're putting someone, you know, with that level of experience on a super low volume training program saying, you know, push really hard, intensity, 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 they would probably actually do better with a little bit more volume, but bringing the intensity down a bit because they just don't know their potential yeah if that sort of makes sense so it's going to impact things like your training volume like i said frequency exercise selection as well the more advanced you get typically the more moves you will have available to you but if you've just started going to the gym you're not going to be wanting to try and do 
a barbell back squat straight away if you have literally never squatted in your life you're gonna have to start doing like body weight movements you're gonna have to start doing like dumbbell movements machine work is really really good if you're a beginner it's just gonna impact your exercise selection quite a bit you know the advancedness of the movements you put in all that sort of stuff so that's something else you need to consider so you're considering your goals both aesthetic and performance you're considering your fitness level to help you inform frequency intensity volume all that sort of stuff how many times you can train a week and then you're also going to want to consider what's realistic for you there's no point in you making a five day a week training program if you know you only have time for three i see it with clients all the time i'm a very lenient coach in the sense that like if i know you cannot do five days a week but you used to be able to do it, but now you've got a new job, you've got a puppy to look after, you're in a relationship now, you can't get to the gym five times a week. I'm not gonna keep you on a five times a week program. It's demoralizing, it's demotivating to have five sessions to do a week, but it's physically impossible. You feel like you're constantly failing. So it's really important to have a frequency that you know you can stick to, and you know you can stick to consistently. So you need to look at realistically, how much time do you have to train? And that will help you to inform both your frequency of your training sessions, how many training sessions are you gonna do in a week? And also the length of those sessions. Some people can spend you know, an hour and a half in the gym for a training session and that's great. For most people, a session would maximum be an hour and a half unless you're doing some crazy, crazy shit. But other than that, you know, some people might only have half an hour to train, in which case you might be looking to implement things like supersets, um, shorter rest periods. It's all very, very individual. And that's another thing that I just want to go over really, really quick before I go into like how I actually plan out a workout program is you need to find the balance between what's optimal and what you enjoy and what you can actually do. So we all know longer rest times, it's way more optimal for your strength. It's gonna mean that you're properly recovered and ready to go into your next set if you've been resting adequately as opposed to only resting for, for example, a minute between your sets. However, not everyone has the time to be resting two to three minutes, especially like three minutes. If you're doing strength work, some people rest for like five minutes. Not everyone has got time for that. So you need to find a balance between what you can actually do and what you actually enjoy and what's optimal because the most optimal thing, regardless of what the science says, like we can use that as a guide, but the most optimal thing ultimately is something that's actually achievable for you, something that you enjoy, something that you're gonna want to do and something that you can do. If you do not have time to be resting three minutes between sets, we need to work around that we need to fiddle around with things so yeah those are some things that i like to consider and would recommend you consider before you go into like the actual writing out of a program that's kind of the planning process now we're going to move into the practicality of it so what i like to do and this is how i did my program today that i've written up which i'm going to be following from monday so i like to write out a list of my favorite movements at the moment the ones i've been enjoying the ones that i've been you know gelling with progressing well on the ones that realistically i want in my program the ones where if they weren't in my program i'd probably be looking at my program and thinking shit where can i sub something out to put this in instead because when i'm doing my own program that's the fun of it i get to pick exactly what goes in it um so i like to write out a list of my favorite exercises so you've got your list of favorite exercises and then underneath you've got how many sessions you're going to be wanting to try and split those across now it's really really important that you don't go ham with your list of favorite exercises if you've got like 30 exercises on there probably better off banking about half of them and saving those for like a next cycle of workouts because you don't want to put too much into a training program you kind of need to pick so maybe when you're doing a list try not to write too many things on there so then i basically slot them in across the sessions where it makes sense considerations for that are of course what you enjoy but you've already got the list of your favorite exercises then you are gonna wanna be thinking about your volumes both across the week and per session. So how many sets are you looking to realistically be doing per session? Because if you're looking to only be hitting like 
15, 10 to 15 sets in a session, you're probably not going to want to be putting eight exercises per workout. So that's something that you need to consider. And then look at your weekly volume for each muscle group as a whole. Like I said, I don't want to go into this too much because otherwise this video is going to be super, super long. But that is something that I always consider when I am making a workout program. You don't want it to be not enough volume, but you also don't want it to be too much volume because volume works kind of on a like bell curve. So if you think about it like that, there's like an amount of volume and it's not the same for each person. People love to paint things in black and white in the fitness industry, but we are all different. We can use ballpark figures. We can use averages, estimations, but ultimately everyone is different. So this is gonna be a bit of trial and error, but you will notice when you've been training for a while that there will be a point where that is the amount of volume where you see the best results, the best progress, you can recover from it, which is super, super important. Um, I know we're talking about a training program here, but recovery needs to be built into that. It is very important. Um, anything less than that amount of volume and you're not really getting the maximum results and anything more than that and it actually has a negative impact on your progress, on your results. So you need to find that sweet spot and you want to be checking that across the week, across each session, but weekly volume is obviously the more important thing here. So you need to be checking that when you are slotting exercises in, when you're coming in with sets and reps, all that sort of stuff. That's something that you need to be considering. The other thing is when you're taking things from your favorites list and slotting those into workouts, you're gonna need to consider exercise order. Now this kind of goes back a little bit to goals. So if your goal is to hit a PB on squats, or if your goal is to hit a PB on deadlifts, you're not gonna be one of want to be putting your squats and deadlifts as the third exercise in your sessions. The movements that you really, really, really want to progress on should go first. Typically, there will be compound movements, but you know, there might be some isolation movements that you want to make sure that you are progressing on and that you want to hit PBs on. In which case, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you put them before compounds, but in the list of your isolation things in your workouts, maybe put them a bit higher than others. Ultimately, as your session goes on, your energy is gonna dwindle. I don't care what kind of rocket fuel you have ingested before your workout, your energy will eventually dwindle. Um, the output that you're able to achieve on each exercise is going to go down so you need to consider what are the key lifts that you really really want to progress on in a dream world we'll be progressing on every single lift every single week but that's just not realistic so to improve the chances of you hitting your performance goals on the lifts that you've selected try and put those earlier on in your session generally speaking as well with the exercise order you're going to want compounds first then into your isolation work. You've considered what you enjoy, you've considered your volume and you've put your exercises in order. The next thing that you are gonna want to be looking at is things like reps in reserve to inform your intensity. Reps in reserve is heavily linked to the intensity of your sessions. So the lower the reps in reserve, the more intense your sets are. So if you're leaving one rep in reserve in your sets, that's gonna be a way more intense Set, a way more meaningful set as well as opposed to something where you're leaving five reps in reserve typically you want to be staying kind of in the one failure to like three reps in reserve kind of range it's everyone's got different opinions on training to failure i don't personally think you should be pushing every single set to failure every single week i think testing out failure every so often is excellent depending on the lift i wouldn't recommend for example beginners testing out going to failure on squat barbell back squats i don't really think that's helpful there are certain lifts where it's definitely more safe for you to go to failure on than others for example hip thrusts is definitely safer for you to work to failure on than um a deadlift or a squat if you fail a hip thrust rep it just it doesn't come off the floor. If you fail a squat, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, especially if you don't use safety bars. Um, with deadlift, your back could go completely. If you hit failure and you're not like able to cope with the weight, you drop it, you land funny, 
your back rounds a bit too much your back's in just a very compromised position so you do need to consider that and i think that will also be impacted by your fitness levels and your experience i'd never recommend that beginners are like pumping all the way to failure on every single set like it's just too intense also going to be very very hard to gauge where failure is i think for most experienced lifters a really good way of making sure that you are training with the right kind of intensity it is the last set of your exercises try and take that to failure and then you can kind of gauge how far truly off it you were with your previous sets were you hitting the intended reps and reserve um it's a little bit less harsh than saying just go to failure on every single every single set that you're doing so with your reps and reserve like i've just said typically anywhere from like failure it really does depend on fitness levels but anywhere from failure to about three reps in reserve is where the meaningful sets that are really gonna stimulate some progress stimulate some growth are gonna happen so reps in reserve is something that you need to consider but like i've said that's also going to be informed by your experience you know how long you've been lifting for all that sort of stuff um i feel like reps and reserve and training intensity could probably be a whole video in itself so if you want a video on that then let me know but reps and reserve the training intensity is something that you are going to want to be considering rest times as well is something that you're going to want to be considering so this is going to be dependent on how much time you have to train because if you have less time you're probably not going to be able to take super super long rest periods but your rest periods will also be impacted by what you're trying to work on so if you're trying to work on things like endurance you can probably get away with shorter rest periods because you're pushing how long you can do something for not necessarily just how much you can lift for things like hypertrophy strength you want to be resting a lot longer so for most people two minutes minimum would be for your main compounds what i would be saying you should be resting for two minutes minimum um most of my rest periods in this for my compounds tend to be two to three minutes but i'll take you through that typically through a workout rest time start longest at the start hello <laughs> Typically, <laughs> your rest periods are going to start longest at the start of your session because that's where your compounds are. That's where you want to be really making the most out of every single set that you are doing. And as the session goes on, rest times, you know, as you come into your isolation work, for example, low body days, things like kickbacks, rest periods can be shortened a little bit. That is something else that you need to consider. Another thing that you're going to want to consider is your frequency for your muscle groups so for example if an area that you really want to bring up is your glutes you might be better trying to split that up split the volume required for you to see growth in that area up between two to three sessions rather than trying to fit it into one um so yeah the frequency of training muscle groups is also something that you're going to need to consider other considerations are things like the exercise selection so in terms of for example your lower body sessions um you need to be considering how long things are going to take to recover from so hamstrings typically for most people are the things that take the longest to recover so for me personally i do not like to split my hamstring volume across the week i kind of like to get it one and done because if i do a bit of hamstring work in every session i'm literally constantly sore like my body really really struggles with that so i personally do prefer to keep you know a lot of my particularly things like rdls and things that are going to work my hamstrings in a stretch position and like to try and keep them in the same session where possible and generally speaking any exercise so uh, again if we're talking lower body any exercise that works your muscles through a lengthened position is going to cause a lot more damage and take you a lot longer to recover from as opposed to things that work them in a shortened position for example your glutes are going to be able to recover from things like hip thrusts cast glute bridges um rounded back extensions your kickbacks you're going to be able to recover from that a lot quicker and therefore do those more frequently so that's going to inform your training program than things like bulgarian split squats 
leg press, reverse lunges, because they are working your glutes in a stretch position. A lot more muscle damage takes a lot longer for your body to recover from that. You wanna make sure that you're not going into your sessions constantly sore. If you are, it's gonna hamper with your progressive overload, which in turn is gonna hamper with your muscle growth, mus muscle growth, muscle growth, hypertrophy, assuming that that is what you want to work on, obviously. It's not gonna be for everyone. Um, another thing that you're gonna to wanna to consider is biases for movements. So for example, you can have a quad bias squat, you can have a glute bias squat. With a leg press, you could have a quad biased leg press. You could also have a glute bias leg press. But the thing is, and the mistake that I see quite a lot of people making when they're doing lower body training is making absolutely every single move glute biased. Even if you want to grow your glute, if you're making every single movement you're doing across three training sessions in a week glute biased, probably too much volume on your glutes and you would be better off actually saying, do you know what? My reverse lunges, I'm going to make those more quad biased. My Bulgarian split squats, I'm going to do those with a bit of a closer stance to the bench and make those more quad biased. Because otherwise, you're, if you're constantly doing everything glute bias, it's too much volume, your glutes are not going to be recovering, you're probably not going to be able to progressively overload, and it is going to hamper with your results. So when you're looking at like biasing certain muscles over others, make sure that you are kind of evenly, evenly spreading things. Even if you have things you want to work on more than others, obviously you will accommodate more set small volume for that muscle group if you're trying to bring it up but don't take it too far not every day glute biased everything it's it's a little bit overkill i've been there i've made that mistake let's learn from my mistakes and then another thing that you might want to consider i feel like i'm coming at this video from like a hypertrophy perspective but that's just because i know what my program entails and it's a hypertrophic program um but if you want to work on your cardiovascular health considerations for things like cardio but so if you're trying to do weight training five times a week i wouldn't then recommend that you're trying to do four hit sessions a week on top of that it's a lot it's a lot and you're probably really 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 gonna struggle 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 to recover from that your body is gonna be under a lot of stress so you know the more you kind of need to slot in cardio or to be honest if cardio is your you know preference you need to slot in weight training if you're going to be doing that around the cardio and vice versa um so you know if you're thinking i do want to do some cardio but i'm weight training five times a week and i'm not willing to give that up you might be better off doing a couple sessions of lifts a week or maybe like a little bit of intervals but probably not like four times a week because it's going to be a little bit much but that is something else to consider um where you're going to place your cardio in your workouts if you are doing it so if you're wanting to work on your cardio cardiovascular fitness and that's your main priority not growing your muscles then you would want to be doing your cardio before weights if you are trying to do it on the same day if your main priority is hypertrophy but you do want to you know make sure that you're getting a bit of cardio in there you're going to want to do your cardio after weights so now on to my personal program like i said at the start this is my program this is built around my goals my fitness level, my ability is what I want to achieve. I'm not saying you need to follow this program. I'm also in no way saying if you follow this program, you will see my results, you will look like me because you won't. You could buy every single in the world's program. You could buy Tammy Hembrow's program. I've made this mistake because I literally used to be that bitch that was like, I'm gonna buy this program and then I'm gonna look like that. And guess what? It never happened because I'm not built like that. I'm five foot six. I'm not five foot. My muscles are never going to look. They're just never going to look like that. And I've kind of come to terms with that now. So yeah, quick disclaimers. I'm not saying, you know, if you follow this program, you're going to look like me. I'm not saying you need to follow this program. I'm not saying I'm the holy baby Jesus be all end all of workout programs i'm not saying this is the best program in the world this is my training program built around my current goals which i'll get into to kind of explain how i've informed the program you are welcome to join me from monday monday the, the monday coming up i think this is going up on sunday so tomorrow join me from tomorrow let's do this program together if you want to do it if you're a beginner 
maybe not i will whip something up i promise i'll do like a more beginner focus video on training programs and i will give you a program for free of course what are my goals first of all because that is what informs my training program so my goals at the moment are and i've spoke about this in a recent video is i'm trying to build i'm trying to gain a little bit of weight but for the first time i'm taking a much more holistic approach um re you know previously i've been super 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 glute focused you know i've only very recently started seriously training my hamstrings because i realized one i think it was actually causing me actual like issues with my body i don't mean like looks wise i mean like actual like functional issues with my body the fact that my like glutes and quads were so strong in comparison to hamstrings i think it was causing problems um you know previously i've been very 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 heavily glute focused and i would still love to see some glute growth i'm not gonna cower away or shy away from saying i want my bum to grow just because people think it's it shouldn't be a trend or it's out of trend or people talk about glutes too much i'm not gonna cower away from that because <laughs> what's the point of me saying that you're then gonna see me posting pics of my bum on the gram and you're gonna be like amy but i thought this wasn't about your bum i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna be that person it's like i don't care about how i look but here's a body check with every single what I eat in a day post. It's okay to care about these things as long as it's not having like a bad impact on your mental health. It's okay to have aesthetic goals. And I do. But they're a lot more holistic this time round. I am team no calves. I need calves. Like, I cannot... I, yeah i need some calves um so yeah overall i want to just build a bit of muscle my main like focus areas are my lower body as a whole to be honest so like i've said quads hamstrings glutes and calves um hamstrings is something i'm super keen to work on because it is something that i have kind of neglected i also want to develop my back and in particular my biceps i'm like quite i wouldn't say tricep dominant i just say my triceps definitely grow a lot quicker than my biceps do so my back and my biceps something that i want to work on for me personally shoulders are not something i'm too bothered about assigning a shit ton of volume to each week for just because i train shoulders like once a week and that's me looking wham as hell for the next four weeks i'm quite happy with the size of my shoulders i don't particularly want them to get any bigger and i am quite like i'm not a super broad person but like when i train my shoulders they grow very very quick and i just don't want huge shoulders on me personally i think they look stunning on other people it's not something i want on myself so my shoulder volume is a little bit lower chest work you will know there's absolutely no chest work in this program if you are going to follow it i would recommend that you put some in honestly the only reason i don't train chest is because i have implants and they are under the muscle i was told it would not hamper with my training that was a downright lie um everyone's different with this but for me personally it's very uncomfortable and very painful for me to train chest so unfortunately i can't train chest and there is no chest work in this program um but you are more than welcome to add that into some of the upper body days if you wish to um and i would recommend that you do i'd never recommend that you completely neglect a muscle group even if you don't want it to grow doing some maintenance volume just to keep everything in balance everything in unison harmony i'd always recommend doing a little bit of that flexibility is something that i want to work on i trained super hard um whilst i was at uni to get the splits and it took me a year because your girl is not naturally flexible it took me a year and i got there and then like i've just said i'm not naturally flexible flexibility with me use it or lose it and i've lost it i can't do the splits anymore so flexibility is something that i want to work on because i want to be able to do my front splits again and i really want to get my box splits i have a feeling that will probably take me years but i really want to get my box splits so flexibility is something that i want to work on mobility is something that i have been working on and something that i want to continue to work on which i would say i will go over in this program um and then cardiovascular health this is something i have neglected because i've been a weights girl through and through but me and dan have actually started doing these things called tribe classes and it's predominantly cardio like there's a resistance bit in the middle but like it's a cardio class like 
no one's going there to build muscle it is a cardio class but i've actually been really enjoying it and i've found ways of doing cardio in the gym as well that i really enjoy and i want to feel like an athlete do you know what i mean like i want to feel like super fit and healthy and like i'm not limited by my you know cardiovascular fitness being a little bit less than like you know my strength all that sort of stuff i kind of want to be more holistic in my training so cardiovascular health is something that i also will be working on in this program without further ado i will bring up on the screen my workout schedule across the week as like an overview so you can see what we've got going on so monday lower a tuesday upper a wednesday lower b thursday upper b slash cardio friday lower c and saturday tribe class cardio so on saturdays like we're doing one tomorrow morning at quarter past nine that's when we do a tribe class together and with some of dan's friends um it's kind of like more of like a social thing because like it's like where are we going to go for food after like that's kind of why we all uh, it's not why we all go but like it's a big driving force as to why we all go um and like i said i've been really really enjoying it classes is how i actually started getting into fitness and i just find it it's nostalgic i have been enjoying it and it's pushing yourself in a way that like i just wouldn't push myself if i was on my own being in that environment really really does push me and it helps me that when i'm doing cardio on my own in the gym i know i can go harder and i'm not gonna die even if i think i'm gonna die I know I'm not because I've done it in a tribe class on a Saturday morning. You'll know I don't train lower back to back. I don't do lower on a Monday, lower on a Tuesday. I don't do that. You want to be leaving at least 48 hours between your lower body, between training the same muscle group. Again, you will see my training volume, my the amount of exercise that I do in a session is significantly lower than quite a lot of people's and that's because i split it across three sessions in the week you cannot be training legs three times a week and doing like 10 exercises in a session it's way 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 too much for the vast majority of people i've never trained anyone who it's not been too much for and i've trained quite a lot of people now um so yeah you'll notice i've built in the recovery i've given myself adequate rest between training sessions um, and something else to note is my lower C workout on the Friday, sometimes that will move to a Sunday. Also, sometimes one of my lower body sessions will be missed just because sometimes I get super, super hectic. So sometimes I'm going to be, I'm aiming to do all the sessions a week. I'm aiming to do the five sessions a week, but sometimes it will end up being four sessions a week and the tribe class just for um full transparency it really does depend on my week but i am trying because i know i can do it like my body can recover from it and it's what i personally see really really good results from so i'll take you through like my workout program talk you through it all that sort of stuff so lower body a is hip thrust that's my hip thrust focus day so i'm wanting to work on my hip thrust strength just because quite for the past few months i've kind of done like four times a and all that sort of stuff like i've not really been doing any like pyramid sets you know i've not really had too many training systems in my workout program and that's something that i wanted to change i wanted to incorporate some more training systems so we've got some pyramid sets we've got a pyramid set on low body a on hip thrust because that's something that i want to work on my reps in reserve i'm aiming for is one to two so i want to be leaving one to two reps in reserve for the first three sets and then you'll know underneath the final set where it says six reps i'm going to be taking that to failure pushing as hard as i can um i do have some like numbers that i want to hit which i won't share in this video because i feel like i'm going to jinx myself and then i'm not going to hit them but i do have some pbs that i want to hit um on my hip thrusts then going into leg press three sets six to ten reps so when there's a rep range basically what i tend to do it, it is kind of a pyramid set but i don't like to give myself like a rigid pyramid set with specific reps for every single thing so when i use a range what i tend to do is start on the lighter more mo well not light but like moderately heavy end of things so i'm probably going to be hitting closer to 10 reps 
and then on each set add more weight but aim to be within that six to ten rep range if that makes sense i do get asked about rep ranges sometimes that's my personal take on putting them in that's why i like to put them in anyway rir of one reps in reserve of one mainly because um i find i can push myself really really hard on the leg press also you're supported in the leg press you know there's a lot of pressure taken off having to balance there's a lot of pressure taking off bracing obviously you are still going to need to brace you need to make sure your bums firmly on that seat so your back's not round at the bottom but it's a lot easier to push yourself harder on leg press bulgarian split squats i know crazy that i put this on my list of likes i had a few messages about that on instagram but i do actually really enjoy doing them so i've got bulgarian split squats then three sets of eight to twelve reps same thing again with the rep range reps in reserve of one to two um so i'm aiming to be around one to two reps in reserve when i do reps in reserve ranges oh that's gonna run out yeah when i do reps in reserve ranges i tend to start so for example if i've done a reps in reserve range of one to two my first set might be closer to two reps in reserve my later sets might be closer to one rep in reserve that kind of makes sense that's the range i'm aiming for rest two minutes adequate rest because Bulgarian split squats just hit different. It's like you do one leg and then you're like, fuck, I've got to do the other leg. It just kills. And then some glute medius kickbacks, three times 12 to 15 reps, reps in reserve of one, rest 130. So as you'll see throughout my session, my reps typically get higher. Um, my sets typically come down. So I tend to do higher rep work as I go through my workout. I tend to knock sets down as I go through my workout. Um, and my rest period tends to decrease as I go through my workout and move through to my isolation work because it just doesn't require as much rest. What you will note there is I've got four exercises, literally four exercises, but trust me, that is enough in a session for me. For me, like two years ago, this honestly wouldn't have been enough probably because I wouldn't have known how to push myself hard enough to make the most of that volume. There's no point, I know we all love to preach about going on a lower volume program and they really are amazing but there's no point in you switching to like a super low volume program if you're leaving like five reps in reserve on every single set like you're not going to be making the most out of that lower volume so if you are going to a lower volume you need to make sure your intensity is there your effort is there and you are really 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 pushing moving on to lower body b so obviously i would leave 48 hours between these sessions but i just happened to write my lower sessions out before i did my uppers so lower body b hack squat reason being why i've put hack squat in there instead of back squats is because i have got a niggling injury not injury but like a niggling problem with my back which i'm not going to go into too much because i don't want anyone who maybe has the same issue to then take this and inform them because you could have the same area of pro problem area but like a very different injury for me personally i've just i think squats right now like barbell back squats are just not not a good idea i found myself getting really frustrated with barbell back squats for a long time now like i feel like i used to find it e not easy to progress on them but i used to be able to progress on them i used to be able to squat like 80 kg um, I think my PB is like closer to like 90 but I just recently I, I'm i like stuck with my weights on squats I can't progress every single week it just feels like I they're just a real sticking point and it's to the point now where I'm just like I actually just want to take a clean break from back squats because I'm really not enjoying doing them so I'm taking a break from barbell back squats for this cycle of sessions for myself I'm going with a hack squat instead four sets of eight to 12 reps, reps in reserve one to two, rest two to three minutes. RDLs are coming up next, little pyramid set there. So we've got 10, eight, six, reps in reserve of one, rest two to three minutes again. Um, and then walking lunges, three sets of 20 to 30 reps. I'm gonna be doing those with dumbbells. Some people like to do barbell walking lunges. I always will prefer dumbbells. It's just my personal preference. RAR 1 slash F. Um, I've written that because on the third and final, the third, the third, on the third and final set, I want to be trying to take that all the way to failure. The rest, I'm going to be leaving one rep in the tank. Rest two minutes. Leg extension, three sets of 10 and a drop set on the end. So 
I am going to do three sets and then when I'm on my third set, that's gonna be performed as a drop set. Now, when people do drop sets, you need to make sure that you are actually like hitting failure before you drop the weight, otherwise it's not really a proper drop set. It's a little bit redundant. So on that third and final set, let's say I'm doing, I hit 10 reps to failure on 30, what? 45 kilograms, let's say. I hit failure on 45 kilograms. Straight away, I'm gonna drop the weight um, go to failure on that new weight then once I've hit failure again drop the weight again go to failure and I tend to do it until I can't get more than like four to five reps out because once I've hit that point I'm like do you know what I'm out um so yeah reps in reserve on that one obviously is one slash failure rest one minute 30 um, and then I've tagged calf raises onto the end there. Um, then we've got lower body C. So my main lift focus here is my deadlift. And I'm just gonna be doing conventional deadlift. I love to hit triple digits on deadlifts, which is why I've got 10, 8, 6, 3. I'm working in those lower rep ranges to really, really work on my strength. Um, rest periods, nice and long. I've written two to three minutes, but to be honest, especially when I'm doing like six, three reps, probably gonna be close to the three minute mark, maybe even four minutes. Then I've got Kaz glute bridges, three sets of eight to 12 reps. So obviously I've got hip thrust at the start of the week, um, doing my pyramid set, working on strength, and then Kaz glute bridges with a slightly like typical hypertrophy range that I wanna be hitting. Reps in reserve, one rest, two minutes between sets. Single leg leg press, three sets, eight to 10 reps reps in reserve, one slash failure, because on that third and final set, I'm gonna be trying to take that to failure, rest two minutes, and then we've got hamstring curls, four sets of 12 reps. To move on to my upper body sessions, just to explain really quick, I mix push and pull, because as I've explained, I can't do chest work, and I'm not super bothered about having a ton of volume in there for my shoulders, so for me personally, it makes more sense for me to just mix push and pull, I don't split them down the middle, so upper body A, we've got cable seated rows, four sets of eight reps, reps in reserve, one to two, rest two minutes. Straight arm pull down, three sets of 10 reps, reps in reserve, one, rest, one thirty to two minutes. Lateral raises, three times 12 to 15 reps, reps in reserve, one, rest, one thirty, And then a tricep and bicep cable superset. So I'm gonna be doing tricep push downs, cable bicep curls, four sets of eight to 12 reps, RIR one slash F because on that fourth and final set, I want to make sure that I'm taking on that superset both the tricep work and the bicep work to failure. Rest one thirty to two minutes. Then at the end of the upper body session, we have got a little bit of core work. It's very, very, very simple. It's nothing fancy. 30 seconds of leg raises followed by 30 seconds of bicycle crunches. And when I say bicycle crunches, I don't mean like going super fast and like going ham. I mean like slow and controlled. You're bringing that elbow to the knee um, and you're really extending your leg out. You're doing it slow and controlled. Trust me, you will feel a big difference as opposed to just rushing through every single rep on there. But I'm doing that time, so it's 30 seconds on each three rounds one minute rest between rounds that's my core work and that is upper body a complete upper body b shoulder press oh my battery's running out one second i've got shoulder press four sets eight to twelve reps reps in reserve of two rest two minutes like i said you will notice the shoulder work in here the delt work in general very 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 min minimal i'm not trying to do too much with the shoulders in general um then a kneeling single arm cable pull down these are for lats and i really 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 love doing these these have been like a game changer i absolutely love doing these so four sets of eight to twelve reps reps in reserve of one rest 130 to two minutes i find with any like single arm work in particular single legs a bit different because it really does take out of you but with single arm work so obviously you do one arm, then you do the other. I can typically get away with a bit of a shorter rest period because 
it ends up being about two minutes between actual arms, if that makes sense, even if I've only rested like 1.30. And we've got face pulls. These are going to be for full context, rear delt focused face pulls, rear delt focused cable face pulls, three sets of 12 to 15, RAR one to two, rest 1.30. And then hammer curls, like I said, my biceps are more of a focus for me than my triceps, hence why I'm training those twice a week. Four sets of 12 reps, RAR one, rest 130. And then at the end of that session, I'm going to have my cardio finisher, which is gonna be 10 minutes on the stairs, one minute on the speed of like four to six. I'm speaking with my specific stair master. It might be different in every single gym, but that's about like, a very like leisurely pace for me and then one minute on minimum 12. I like to try and go to like 15 but sometimes I'm like I literally feel like I'm gonna pass out and you don't really want to be doing that on moving stairs at a high speed so yeah you basically interval that until you hit 10 minutes and um, if you're feeling super brave on the final minute go up by like one to two in speed every 15 seconds and yeah. Then you've got core work. Um, so I like to work on core again. Sometimes I don't always do my second bit of core and ab work in the week, but I like to try. I put it in there because I feel like if it's in there, I'm more likely to do it. So plank hold to failure, Russian twists, 30 seconds on each, repeat three times, one minute rest. That's it, Bob's your uncle. Fanny is your aunt. The other things to focus to focus on, the other things to know in my training program are my mobility, warm-ups, dynamic stretching, all that sort of stuff. So warm-up wise, I don't actually do like a full blown, I don't do any like banded warm-up stuff. I don't do any like, I don't do like a super magical crazy warm-up routine i will link below the upper body warm-up routine that i like to do which uses a long band that's my favorite upper body warm-up to do that's what i do um before both of my upper body sessions typically and i am yet to have a niggle with my upper body so fingers crossed that is working a treat Lower body wise, what i tend to do is i'll do some dynamic stretches so i'll do some things like leg swings all that sort of stuff, front to back, side to side. Then I will do some mobility work. So if you want a full video on mobility work, because it's, I can't physically like show you right now. If you want a full video on my mobility routine, let me know. I personally am, um, with mobility, I think you need to be working on the things that are like an issue for you. Obviously it's a good idea for people to be doing maintenance for, you know, the hips, shoulders, ankles all that sort of stuff you should be maintaining good mobility like keeping up with it but like if there's a glaring problem so for example i realize i've got really really bad ankle mobility so i've prioritized that whereas someone who has really good ankle mobility might not need to do as much ankle mobility work as i do if that makes sense if you want me to show you my mobility routine let me know in the comments and i'll do a video on it the reason why i'm kind of like hesitant to go too into it is a moment at the moment is because mobility work has kind of like blown up over social media over the past six months and i think it's a great thing it's something that i have definitely neglected in the past and um, i definitely don't think it's a bad thing but what i don't want to do is just jump on it and be uninformed misinformed so i've actually been looking at doing like courses on um mobility work just to make sure that i'm giving out information that i properly understand rather than just parroting someone else's work but if you want people that like really 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 know their shit when it comes to mobility work especially like anything to do with like your lower body stuff squat university have got amazing videos on mobility work and i would definitely recommend you check those out and um, there's a girl on tiktok who's got really good mobility work on her page which i will leave linked below i can't remember a name off the top of my head but I have used both of their content to put together my own little mobility routine and I do that before every single lower body session. For my upper body warm-ups and all that sort of stuff, like I've said, I'll leave below the link to the band warm-up stuff. I do um, and I do need to start doing some upper body mobility work as well. But yes, I do my mobility, dynamic stretching, all that sort of stuff before I go into my training and warm-ups wise 
for like lower body for example let's say i'm doing hip thrusts i will do warm-up sets before i go into my working set that for me has been a much better way of me warming up and yeah i think going through lighter even body weight motions of the movements you're going to be doing in that session is a really solid warm-up you don't need anything fancy schmancy like literally go through lighter loaded or bodyweight versions of the movements you're going to be doing the patterns the movement patterns you're going to be doing in your session and you should be absolutely fine um so yeah and your warm-up sets by the way because i get asked about this your warm-up sets you want to be leaving like lots of reps in reserve you don't want to be pushing to failure otherwise that's not a warm-up set it's just a warm-up set so it doesn't count towards your weekly volume because it should not be stimulating enough to count towards that you want to be leaving plenty of reps in reserve way lighter load than your working sets so yeah i hope that makes sense and then my stretching for my flexibility comes post workout so like i said i am working on getting my splits back again so i've been doing some lower back stretching to help with my back so i've been doing like windshield wiper stretches i don't know if that's the proper name that's just what i've been calling them my memory card's gonna run out one second yeah i've been doing the windshield wiper stretches so basically you lie flat on your back like this with your arms out you want to bring your knees up not really towards your chest but like so that they're like that and then turn them side to side but the key is you need to keep your shoulders both shoulders on the mat or the floor whatever you're doing it on i found that really helpful pigeon stretches knee hugs all that sort of stuff i've been doing and then splits specific i've been doing the lunge stretch so where you really like push you get into like a lunge position but you really focus on pushing your hip forward hamstring stretches so sitting down reaching for my toes standing up reaching for my toes long band around my foot and like pulling my foot towards me um typically you would do that with like someone else that i train by myself so i do that with a long pun to help me as a training partner replacement um what else do i do pigeon stretches again like i've just said frog stretch is another one that i do um rocking back and forth all that sort of stuff um each side frog stretch me and the girl will talk about this on instagram we don't actually know what it's called but that's really really good for getting your box splits really working on that flexibility um and they are typically the stretches that i will do and then i will do strict stretch i will do splits practice so i like to make sure that i've got something to hold on to both sides to put my weight through because i've made this mistake before and i'll never make it again when i was training for the splits last time i didn't used to do that i used to just try and go into it and just rely on myself to keep myself up and to like put my hands on the floor but if you've got something a bit higher that you can push on and put your weight through one i found i got into the splits so quick when i started doing that but two um i like fully like my hamstring like i don't know what the injury was because i never saw anyone about it i just know i was in, in agony and my hamstring like popped because i pushed too far into the splits when i didn't have that a range of motion available to me um so that's something that you want to be aware of and when you're working on improving your flexibility you want to be holding those stretches for like 30 seconds never stretch cold muscles so you want to be doing it when you're already warm so if it's an upper body day you would still want to do like a bit of like dynamic stretching for your lower body maybe a little bit of like walking on the treadmill just to warm up your lower body a little bit more before you go into stretches lower body i tend to just do them straight after my session um, and i'm aiming to stretch like three to five times a week that's because that's what i found worked last time i have to be consistent with it i have to have a high frequency with it otherwise it just i never ever ever get anywhere with it and yeah like i said those longer holes are going to be crucial for building up flexibility that's what i did last time and it really really worked and yeah so that is my training program um i need to work out a way to like have this available like this document available for you guys so hopefully i've worked that out and i've linked it below if not feel free to like screenshot the bits that i've put in through the video i really really hope this video was helpful obviously i've taken you through my training program 
I've explained to you hopefully something that you are really really important to bear in mind when you are making a program hopefully you understand how to make a program like I said I didn't want this video to be super 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 long I have been filming for about an hour so it's already fucking long brilliant but it won't be like three hours long because I've gone into everything in detail if there's anything in this video that you really want an extra video on let me know because I want to be providing as much useful fitness content as possible I want to be diversifying from just doing like glute related videos I know it's what people want and like I said I'm a woman of the people I just want to give people what they want but you know I do hear people's feedback people do want upper body stuff I would just say if you're asking for body stuff please support it when people do it because it typically doesn't get as much engagement um and ultimately when you are doing this as part of your job you kind of do need to get good engagement with stuff so if you want to see upper body stuff support the ish let me know anything you want to see if there's anything any particular workouts that i've put in here that you'd love for me to take you through the workout film it form tips all that sort of stuff let me know um but yeah that is my full workout program my tips on how to put together a workout program and how i personally like to do it how i approach things let me know if you found this video useful give it a thumbs up um because it really helps youtube to like push my content out subscribe if you want to and you haven't already and let me know what videos you want to be seeing because I'm feeling like providing some good quality informative content and hopefully going to be doing some more courses this year so I can be even more helpful because there's a lot of parroting in the fitness industry and I don't want to talk about things that I don't understand I've just copied it from someone else like I want if someone says but why for me to if someone consistently like says but why but why but why for me to be able to answer at every single level because I've got like a deep understanding of it rather than me just being like oh i saw someone on tiktok say it do you know what i mean that's why like with mobility like i want to make sure i'm fully informed on what i'm talking about rather than just hopping on the trend i'm not ashamed to say i don't know everything i'm not ashamed to say i don't understand everything um yeah I'm gonna leave this video here have a nice week like i said i'll try and leave this somewhere so that you guys have got access to it i'm gonna be starting this training program tomorrow so feel free to join me um let me know if you do do this program tag me in some instagram stories i'd love to see um message me if you've got any questions about the program all that sort of stuff but yeah i'll leave this video now because it's been way too long thanks for watching goodbye i can now free daniel from the the bedroom he's probably asleep by now i feel like the fact that was no response to that tells me